Hello, I'm Wayne Hilborn, and this video is going to teach you how to prove that the Christian God is real and how to understand that dying is very, very safe using logic, science, and reasoning and what we know in 2024. There are several ways at looking at consciousness and reality. Consciousness is essentially memory. You couldn't have consciousness unless it was memory. Your consciousness is associations with everything that you've ever done and there's a emotion but technically time doesn't really exist and if I say things like this is a block universe a lot of people will not understand that and it might go over a lot of heads but if I say Captain Kirk and Spock have access to all of your memories using the USS Enterprise a lot more people will understand that the time if you could surpass the speed of light all your memories still exist. Everything still exists in a block universe. If you ex if you expand the Einstein twin paradox, if you study that, you expand that into a, the logical block universe, then you would understand that all of your memories are concurrent to now. So there are several ways of looking at reality. One is that all of your memories are stored forever as actual simultaneous first kisses, etc. If you remember your high school prom, that's concurrent to now. Your mind is just sending its Star Trek universe type self back in time to your first prom, and it is viewing your prom. It is viewing your graduation. It is learning. It is seeing every, every word in this sentence you are learning concurrently to now. You are learning everything. You are living all your lives concurrently to now. The block universe has no time. Time is an illusion. So there's several ways of looking at reality. And one of them explains Christianity a lot. So if your memories are actual events, then that means that your memories and consciousness are external from the brain. External. They're not in here. If your memories are the actual proms and the actual first kisses and the actual license plate number numbers that you're viewing all concurrently to now, then you don't even need to have any kind of brain memory. A brain memory is redundant in a simultaneous block universe. So your brain doesn't store any memories. It doesn't need to store any memories. It just, it has access to a USS Enterprise type mind that can just go and it can just watch your prom. It can film your prom and it can beam it right to your noggin. The brain is an antenna. The hippocampus is an antenna at best. They've never proved, they've never found memory in the brain. It's actually quite the opposite. Now, if I say, people think that if I talk about dreams, I'm talking about solipsism, but if our memories are external, then we all have a unique personification within what could be termed a common dream. Now, I'm not saying a singular dream where it's just you. I'm saying a common dream where everyone has their own place. It's like watching a dreaming dog running in its dream. He might be chasing a squirrel where he's the enemy, or he might have an enemy chasing him. But either way, the, the dreaming dog flailing its legs in the dream. He feels invested enough in his dream character to run. He feels like he's in peril or he's trying to self-preserve. He feels real. He feels actual. Anybody that's had a psychedelic experience or a real dream or a nightmare that they've woken up from, they know that you can feel real in a nocturnal dream. And I'm telling you that right now, there's no, noct there's no difference between nocturnal dream toast and toast in what you might dream, deem a kitchen. So ask yourself what is logical. Do you think that it could be possible that we're all connected as one and that we're just having a nocturnal dream where we're personifications and we're tuning into the actual events or do you think that our, our, our minds are somehow breaking down every license plate number that we've ever seen and coding it into some sort of language that we don't understand 
and like hiding it in some sort of microtubules or something inside of our brain that we can't figure find out where because they've they, they they can't find memory in the brain and if you can then there's no prize for you but but chopping up the hippocampus and saying oh well if you chop up the hippocampus then people lose their memory yeah yeah you chop off your head you won't have memory either you you can't you can't the brain is an antenna it's like the, the musician is not in the radio you have to understand that that the signals can come elsewhere and that's essentially how we operate in this reality so if memories are external and we're talking about the Christian God why 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 dying is safe now if you understand that time is simultaneous and that every memory that makes you you is concurrently to a billion one years from tomorrow if you realize that your memories are external from the brain then that makes dying a lot safer doesn't it like why then then if your brain like gets all mushed up you could stomp on your brain if memories are external and that wouldn't affect your memories or consciousness because that would be external as the actual events so now I am going to compare this synopsis to a dream to simplify but expectations faith runs computer causes quantum collapse even into the perceived past so there is science behind how this dream operates but for simplicity's sake I'm telling you that you're inside what could best be described as a common dream you're inside of a very very realistic nocturnal dream like it's high definition it's 60 frames per second you're in a very realistic dream it's like and in a dream at night weird things can happen and you wouldn't think twice Woo! a dragon flies by it's like that's normal in a nocturnal dream you don't care about stuff like that but in a, in a but in our our shared dream everything is an overlay of expectations and we're living in a materialistic expectancy type universe where everything has to have an explanation which is fine because it does but the way a giant imagination works is that it's a giant imagination and that means that if we're in a giant imagination then everything that you once thought possible automatically becomes probable everything that you thought possible in your entire life automatically becomes probable in a common dream like what kind of cheap ass giant imagination would this be if we couldn't like teleport things from planet to planet someday or have aliens and do all sorts of fun Star Trek type stuff if we don't have we're, we're forever creatures we don't we're not humans per se we're we're temporary humans we're immortal changelings okay so if you're a mental creature living in a mental universe hermetic principle number one if you're a mental creature living in a mental universe where a dream scenario is likely then what would that make death in our human reality if you're in a dream right now then what would death be using your logic your reason reasoning your understanding if your memories are the actual events that you're just tuning into and you're inside what common sense and logic might dictate our common dream the death would be what it would be a waking up process you would be waking up you would just wake up it'd be like your alarm went off in the other realm you would like wake up and be like oh wow that was pretty crazy I was like oh that's doing all sorts of stuff down there <sighs> and that's how life is and that's how reality works and it's as simple as that we're not linear and squishy the way we feel we have to, we have to personally evolve Charles Darwin was wrong you personally were a plant to learn how to breathe and see and a fishy to waggle your butt to move and a crab to learn opposable thumbs and how to walk on land and stuff like you had to put yourself together like Frankenstein now how does this all tie in with Christianity religion 
and how can you prove this? Now, if what I'm saying is true, that you're in a mental universe, then that is something that you can determine. Because you cannot prove that you're not inside of a dream. You can't just say, oh, my mom said I'm real, so I'm no, I'm not in a dream. Like, that's not logical. <laughs> you can't just go, like, you can't just use your mom's, you can't just have your mom sign a note for you and say that you're actual as opposed to being inside of a dream. That's not logical. And there's no way to prove that you're not inside of a dream. Now, I'm not talking about solipsism. I gave you the scientific reasoning that that uh, expectations, faith runs caboodle, causes quantum collapse, even in the perceived past. Because this is a block universe, and Captain Kirk and Spock have access to all of your memories. They can go back in time and view all of your memories from every angle. A lot of our memories we remember in third person, remember. So that explains that also. Now, if you die and you wake up somewhere else, then that implies an afterlife. And heaven, hell, you need bad to have good and you need good to have bad. You need to have broccoli to enjoy the ice cream. You need to have bad. So be thankful for the bad also because you need bad to have good. There is karma and mad, giant imagination might work the way giant imaginations are supposed to work. So we're all just resonance in the end. So you have to think happy thoughts and be uh, use mental tricks and self-discipline to make yourself better at dying and improving your death experience. But there is logic and reasoning to a Christian understanding because there is an afterlife and if you listen to the words that Jesus say says he'll, a lot of the things are like against worry and stuff like that if you listen to the words that Jesus says just the words then he sounds like a hermetic preacher he, so, he sounds like he teaches stuff like what I teach you can take any Jesus quote and I could probably tell you how that would sound from a from an imaginary universe standpoint. Like you could tell uh, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you could tell this mountain to move from here to there and it would move. Because you're in an imaginary universe and it's like, why wouldn't it move? Like you're... you're you're, mad, you're, you're imagining, and that's like a creative force in our... You're putting a weight of thought into a simultaneous event as far as the universe is concerned when you imagine daydreams vs. worry. Now, don't go visualizing mountains moving because a lot of people live on these mountains nowadays and don't, don't mess with <laughs> the middle way. However... If your memories are not stored in the noggin, which they haven't proved, you can't prove that they've stored that the memories are stored in the noggin. You can't store because the musician's not in the radio, so it could just be like you just I mean, chop up the hippocampus or whatever. You're not blocking memory. You're not taking out memory. They haven't been able to find memory. Pribim and Bohr, they tried to cut memories out of the mice and they couldn't that's why Bohr came up with the holographic memory theory a long time ago and now now they're talking microtubules microtubules and stuff like that it's all insanity academia is ignoring common sense because we feel separate the dreaming doggy feels separate from the squirrel that he's that he's chasing the dreaming doggy feels like he's separate from maybe an enemy that's chasing him. The dreaming doggy feels like he's separate. And we feel separate from one another. We don't see cords and that attached to us. And we don't see... So we feel like we're separate. But deep down, you know that there's got to be like some sort of connection going on between all of us. This is all just a... This is all just a, a projection. A holographic projection. A good way to understand reality is actually to study how an actual fo holographic photo is made. You have, you have the background image, which is like the film, and you have an object. And you would take a laser, laser light, 
and you would split that through a laser splitter. So you would have two lasers and you would convex one onto the film and then you would convex the other onto the object which would reflect back onto the film itself. So if you think of that from like a metaphysical perspective, it's like your mind is that laser and you're like predicting one one part of it's going on the all and the other part's going on to your beliefs and it's being reflected onto the all and it's always the most expectations that will win the football match. Always. It has nothing to do with any kind of reality. Our reality is a play that has staged moment by moment based on the expectations of everyone involved. Energy follows all thoughts. Paint a fence all day and, and you'll find every sitcom you watch that evening will be related to fence painting. Now I said that you'd be able to prove to yourself, prove, I've said that you can prove to yourself that God is real if you do manifesting. If you manifest anything, then how? It's like in the dream. If you see, if you see a dragon fly by, that's normal in a dream scenario. So if we're in a dream scenario now, then what wouldn't be normal? Of course magic and miracles are real and aliens are real and teleportation is real and all these things are real inside of our shared dream even if we're not yet at that level to see all these things. So the, everything exists. Everything imaginable is probable. Simultaneously to now and forever. Your first kiss is simultaneous to a billion and one years from tomorrow. You'd be able to watch your entire life on repeat. This is, uh, there's a logical, under, there's a reasonable understanding of why there is an afterlife and it's called the block universe. It's as simple as that. Now there is free will that has to do with retrocausality and I don't even want to speak about retrocausality in this simple minded video because I'm not, because a lot of people don't understand that but it's been proven in particle physics since the 1930s has been based on the fact that like an electron is going forward in time and a positron is going backwards in time. Instead of an electron going up and, and, and meeting a positron and having annihilation, it's like the electron will go up and, and, and come back in time as a positron. So there is no annihilation. But the past changes. <clears throat> the word synchronicity was, was invented by uh, Carl Jung to represent um, what he saw as effect coming before before the cause like how can how can cause come before effect or how can cause come after effect but but he noticed it and it, it something that you can notice when you manifest many things that you manifest won't make linear time sense so if you start manifesting for something and you start giving that thing a lot of thought and intent and then someone walks in with a box of that something something then how did that happen unless retrocausality was at play? So I don't want to use typical names like, I don't want to say names, but keep a journal and pay attention to when you gave intent. And I'm not saying to manifest heavy miracles or anything like that, but everyone should do the race love hate experiment and everybody should like manifest enough to learn that time is not linear because many things that you manifest personally and this is important for you. It's your spiritual growth I'm talking about. It's your understanding of the afterlife we're talking about here. Not mine. <laughs> I can assure you. I know what's going on. I know that I live forever. I know where I'm heading. You are likely... in doubt or you wouldn't be watching this video. I feel bad saying that. I don't like to say anything negative about that. But chances are that a lot of people don't understand that Christianity is logical and reasonable because our memories are forever stored as actual block universe events that Captain Kirk and Spock could go back in time 
and video record if they have the USS Enterprise or a 1981 DeLorean. So all they have to do is just zip back in what we perceive as the past and record the event and send it to our mind in what can best be described as like an interactive radio broadcast. In our eyes, ears, nose, mouth, we're not, aren't, aren't really part of consciousness. Those are other separate, and I could go into other unrelated things. But okay, let's just say that you evolve into your highest possible self. That will be eventually the logical thing. That you would eventually, after another thousand or so lifetimes, that you would be at the peak of your evolution the highest possible, most godly self you can ever be. So, technically, you evolved into God yesterday, but with hindsight in 2020. You personally evolved into God yesterday, but with hindsight in 2020, in an Albert Einstein expanded twin paradox block universe accessible by Captain Kirk and Spock. That's just basic... Stuff we've known for over a hundred years. Special Relativity, 1905, Albert Einstein. Now it's 2024. Like I said, if I say block universe or expanded twin paradox block universe, some people go, oh, I don't, I don't understand all that. But you say, as soon as you say Captain Kirk and Spock can go back and film your first kiss using the USS Enterprise, and they're like, oh, yeah, I now understand. Yeah, that's easy. This isn't the brightest loka. This isn't the brightest world. This isn't the brightest universe. This is, uh, you have to use logic and reasoning. Is, could your memories simply be the fact that you're looking at every license plate number simultaneous to now is is that lot more, does that resonate with you more than the fact that the oh it's it's being broken down the license plate number is being broken down in the, some sort of code and it's being stored as like a photo with like a million other pixels in some sort of place that we haven't been able to find in some, some mysterious consciousness hiding place that nobody will ever ever find because consciousness is inside of our brain. You are God. Simultaneously to now. Simultaneously to yesterday. But with hindsight in 2020. God knows every sparrow that falls in the forest. Because God is every sparrow that falls in the forest. Always was. Now, I've talked about our memories being stored outside of our brain. Now, if our memories are stored outside of the brain, then does that make the brain A, a useless pile of junk, or B, somehow useful? Let me repeat those options. If our memory and consciousness is stored outside, then is our brain just a meaningless pile of junk in the end? And the answer is yes. Our brains are not needed for what we perceive of as consciousness. It's a cooperation of thought forms. We're basically, basically, um, psychic gestalts. Uh, there's associations, which I can get into briefly by saying that if you don't need a brain for consciousness then what about something like the toaster in your kitchen the toaster in your kitchen doesn't have a brain so could it be conscious your toaster void of brain is aware memory equals consciousness that it is simultaneously at the factory being manufactured your toaster is conscious. A rock thinks the hard problem of consciousness is ridiculous. And if you don't know what the hard problem of consciousness is, maybe you shouldn't be watching my videos on consciousness and religion and stuff like that. But mankind has 
the average IQ for human humans is 100. So for every genius that there is 140 IQ, there's a lot of people with like less than 100 IQs, or uh, the average IQ wouldn't be 100. So there's a lot of really unsmart people out there. And academia is aimed at them. <sighs> Arguing against religion and atheist arguing a negative is ridiculous. You can't prove a negative. And the more logical explanation is that we are all connected. We are all one. Now, I've talked about the toaster having a consciousness. Okay, imagine a group of ketchup bottles on a, on a, on a shelf at a grocery store, store. They're all separate and they all have a unique personified separate consciousness if you want to think of inanimate objects now as conscious because they are they all have a rudimentary conscious and they're approached by thoughts in a different way that we are because as i'm about to explain thoughts themselves are conscious because the ketchup bottles are all conscious but you can take one of the ketchup bottles and you can draw a mustache on it and call him fred and you can be like hey fred how are you and talk to the ketchup bottle and personify it like a doll or a dog squeaky toy and you personify that inanimate object away from the group consciousness which it has it its group ketchup bottle consciousness that it had so now you're opening it up to thought forms that are away from the group ketchup bottle consciousness and you're opening it up to thought forms that a doll or squeaky toy might experience from its owner so this is the experience of of a uh, uh, a linear time growth of a soul or whatever. You are resonance, but that resonance is based on what you perceive as a linear timeline, even though the universe is a simultaneous event. So it's all good, bro. You live forever. Um, but you should try, and the most important thing that you can do is learn that the past can change. But even more important than that, I guess, is learning that first that you're uh, in part of a dream. So manifesting is the key to learning that it's okay to understand that weird things can happen. Because they're not happening in what you would deem a reality as what is happening more in what you would think of as a nocturnal dream at night. It's just we have a different set of rules. There's, well, there's one rule. There's only one rule. And that's energy follows all thoughts. But it's not just your thought. It's not just your dream. You're sharing the dream with everybody. Everyone. All around. Me, you, everybody. So it's not your expectations that rule. That's why a writer will suffer from writer's block. Because... They're, the writer's mother doesn't expect them to write a best-selling uh, screenplay or book or whatever and manifest a billion dollars and buy the mother a castle because the mother is pessimistic. It'll reflect on the daughter or the author or whatever. Of the, of, that's a pushback. Energy follows all thoughts, and that includes the people around us. We have to have expectations. Everything builds and gradually... But if you look at what Jesus taught, he taught a lot about faith. He was an Essene healer. He was pretty blessed at his job. He had a lot of experience. He knew how to even repair damaged astral cords, which is something that happens after death. And another topic entirely. Um, however, if you are in a common dream per se then that means that death is just merely a waking up process you wake up but you're simultaneously there and the whole thing and you'd have to study the block universe but the best way to learn that the past can change is just to manifest things and pay attention manifest things and learn that many things you manifest won't make linear time sense and then you'll know for sure that you're in what amounts to a common dream which is logical and reasonable and then, then, and then, and then you know. So mode it be. Be blessed. I'm Wayne Hillborn.